Hello, good morning. How you doing? Welcome back to the Arcane Forge. Welcome back to Drawtober. My name's Josh, and today we're going to be covering day three in my Drawtober randomly generated prompt list. It is the word poll. I'll leave a link down below in my description box where you can get access to my prompt list if you want to draw along with me. Come up with your own illustration or whatever as I try and make it through 31 days of drawing non-digitally with these random words and just see what springs to mind. But if not, if you don't like to draw and you just want to chill out, you can sit back, grab yourself a little drink. I've got myself a cup of coffee. You can just watch the artwork unfold. We can have a little chat. Unlike my Monster Mondays, these videos are kind of, well, I'm sure you will have been able to guess by now, non-scripted and I'm just kind of talking about whatever I felt at the time, whatever I thought about. Sometimes I go wildly off topic. I'm trying to keep these within the kind of 10 minute mark though. That seems to be kind of what I do for my Monster Mondays. I, I suppose I tend to do something between like 15 minutes and half an hour for Monster Mondays. And YouTube tends to be fairly happy with that, as long as it roughly meets about a 10 minute mark, I guess. So I'm going to try and marshal my thoughts enough to keep things to something like 10 minutes. But yeah, poll. Today I just went for, you know, what do I do? Do I draw a massive pole? Who who holds a huge pole? Easy now, this is a child friendly channel. I thought pole vaulting, I thought, you know, how would that equate to a fantasy setting? And there are a lot of very short species that you can play in D&D and I thought of gnomes and uh, I really like goblins, so I thought, you know, Monks tend to carry bow staffs, staves, staffs, they can carry a staff as a weapon. I thought it'd be quite interesting if, uh, like, goblin monks trained to use their pole weapons as kind of like a pole vault kind of thing, and so the idea of um, this goblin doing like a pole vault meets a kick on this huge, huge troll kind of sprang to mind. And I really like this cheeky little guy with his little toothy grin massive massive ears. So yeah, that's what I went ahead and drew today. This drawing was a bit more expressive actually than uh, usual and I really liked that. Uh, my wife is uh, a college student at the moment, she's gone back to college. She's been a graphic designer for years and wanted to kind of branch out into more illustrative things so she's not quite so hemmed in I suppose to doing the same kind of client-based work as uh, you know time after time. And uh, in her college course at the moment, they are exploring the idea of being more expressive and, you know, trying, trying to break you out of a style. Now, I never went to art school. I always wanted to, but I kind of feel like I'm a bit past that now. You know, I've started making a bit of a name for myself in the artistic community. God, that sounds so full of myself. I mean, literally a bit of a name, not like, <laughs> I've made a bit of a name for myself. I mean, I'm, I'm just beginning my artistic career, is what I'm trying to say. And with that foothold, I don't really want to stop and go back to education. I can try and learn on the job. And so I thought I would do the same thing. I thought I would try and do some more expressive stuff. Then in this class, they're trying to use things that aren't paintbrushes and aren't pens and all this kind of stuff. And so the idea of using like some sea sponge for textures. And at some point in here, I'll, I'll you know, sort of flick and splatter ink on the page and kind of blow it to indicate, like, maybe, like, blood being spewed forth from this troll's mouth as he's getting kicked and stuff. Maybe, like, a tooth is breaking and things like that. Just stuff that I wouldn't normally get to do on Photoshop. You know, embrace the creativity that is allowed to me by using a medium that is not digital, you know? Not that you can't achieve all of this in Photoshop. Just I don't know how. So I thought, you know play to analog illustration strengths and try something new and, you know, give it a go. It's the nature of Drawtober anyway. Try and learn, try and experiment, try and change things up. And I really enjoyed this one. Uh, some of you guys have asked um, what materials I'm using, so I thought I would, uh, excuse you Myrtle, snoring away in the background. I thought I would kind of uh, explain some of that stuff. So I brought these, I'm Brought. I bought these um, lovely pencils from Paper Chase that are called Sketcher Non-Photo Blue Pencils. I don't know if this is a company, but it says Carandash, Carandash, a Swiss pencil. Little uh, sort of blue 
lead in the middle of it. Not actually lead, you know what I mean, like the center of the pencil. Um, and the idea of those is that you can sketch to your heart's content. And then when you scan an image in that you've been sketching with, those sketch lines shouldn't show up when you scan it in or take a photo of it. So that saves me all the effort of using an eraser, using a rubber to rub out all the uh, pencil marks that I usually use in an illustration. The only downside is that I have to use pencils that I have to sharpen, and I hate using pencil sharpeners. Whenever I normally draw, I tend to use mechanical pencils, because you can just click, 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 and then you have a sharp point. And I went through so many of these pencils um, just from sketching the few things that I have sketched already so far. So I really don't like using them, um, but they are very useful, you know. I've not had to erase anything when I've been kind of uh, scanning these images in at the end, so that's good. So yeah, I do like them. Um, the other downside is that because they're designed to not show up in scanning and not show up in photos and stuff, they're really hard to see when I'm, you know, recording this stuff. So um, I decided early on that I would sketch out what I'm going to be drawing in advance of filming, which is why you can see all these kind of like blue sketch marks and scribbles. They're not very easy to see on camera. They're much clearer in person. But yeah, so I've kind of sketched these illustrations out before I start filming. And then as soon as ink hits the paper, that's when I'm filming for you guys, because it's really hard to kind of see what I've actually started. And it's a bit of a lengthy process and, you know, it's maybe less entertaining than seeing ink hit the page. For the most part, when I am actually drawing my line work, I tend to use these fantastic brushes, which I cannot recommend highly enough. They are Zig brush pens. From their real brush line, their clean color, their clean color range. They are absolutely fantastic. I love these so, so much. I would use them all the time if I could. I love the lines that these things produce. They're very responsive to pressure. You get very, very fine lines and then immediately transition into very thick ones. The brush strokes look absolutely brilliant and elegant and they kind of have this, I know, very scratchy, but I know, they're, they're exactly what I would love to replicate in Photoshop. So far I have not found a brush, uh, or maybe maybe it's my pressure sensitivity or something like that on my tablet or something like that. If I could replicate this brush in Photoshop, I would be incredibly happy. That's all All I want to do is make this brush stroke um, into what I can get in, in Photoshop. But they never seem to have that kind of um, sensitivity change, you know what I mean? Like, this is why I draw an outline on my drawings as well as doing the regular line work as well because you can never quite you know I've never found that I've been able to get the difference in line weights how I would like them in Photoshop without having to go over things multiple times so I would love it if I could swap easily you know just just changing the pressure or the direction of the brush and things like that in Photoshop would 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 get anything close to these pens I would love that um, but yeah so I use these brushes whenever I get the chance the only downside is, what we'll see here, is when I try and mask these off, they take a long time to dry, so I tend to smudge them up the side of my hands and stuff. Um, but I try and mask with some masking fluid uh, over this little goblin before I start doing the kind of expressive sponge, you know, the sea sponge pattern on this troll. And that completely ruins the image. The water, they are not water resistant, unfortunately. The ink that I use to paint with, I use a... Um, Dollar and Rowney black inks that I just got off of, got off of Amazon, uh, but I've used these kind of uh, inks for years. They are water resistant, so you can do multiple layers and all this kind of stuff and add as much water as you want. They are fine with being masked and fine with being, well, whatever you want to do with them. They're very, very hardy and resilient. But these pens, unfortunately, are not. So sadly, the high contrast that I wanted between this kind of gray mottled skin of the troll the very pale goblin that I made ends up getting really muddied and I have to kind of redraw over the entire goblin again quite frustratingly. You know, in the end I'm, I'm happy with the drawing but it's a lesson to learn that these pens are not water resistant but they are my absolute favourite sort of medium in general to draw with. I love them so much and it will be my mission if I ever get free time uh, 
between drawings to see if I can get something like it to use for Photoshop. Oh god, it'll be peak illustration basically. But yeah. Otherwise the only other thing I use, I use some masking fluid as I say to mask off certain areas sometimes and I use some acrylic white paint to sort of show glistening in creatures eyes and sort of pick out certain highlights and in this illustration's case to kind of clean up the uh, little issues that arose from uh, mixing water with this uh, with this poor goblin later on. But yeah, I think I've witted on quite enough. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Day three of my Drawtober challenge to get 31 illustrations done in the month of October. If you enjoyed this illustration, please make sure to leave a little like down below to let YouTube know if I'm doing a good job. And hopefully I'll see you back here tomorrow for day four, where I'll be covering the word hide. See what we can come up with for that. Maybe something roguish, who knows. But yeah, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.